Hello everyone. Welcome back. We are back with the new variation of plain weave which is weft rib. Now if we remember the previous video of warp rib, warp rib is simply an extension of plain weave in the warp direction to produce longer floats in the warp direction. Similarly, weft rib is also a variation of plain weave where it gets extended in the weft direction to produce longer floats in the weft direction. That said, the variations for weft rib are also going to be regular and irregular. Regular would mean that the number of the or the size of the floats in all the yarns is going to be the same whereas the size of the floats in irregular is going to be varying hence known as irregular to get started we first mark the yarn just like a regular plain weave which is one up one down one up one down now since we want to extend the weave in the weft direction we continue to mark the same yarn again at the second yarn position also which again goes as one up one down one up and one down now to mark the third yarn we go in the reverse order just like plain weave so we mark one down one up and one down one up to get a longer float we again repeat the same yarn in the fourth warp yarn this as you can see is going to give you a longer float in the weft direction being so and it will give you a prominent effect as compared to a regular plain weave. Now effect prominence will vary depending upon the thickness of the yarns and also depending upon the length of the float. The longer the float the more prominent it is going to be. So this is the simplest variation of a regular weft rib. Now if we look at this we need to mark the uh, repeat here which is at 4 warp yarns and 2 weft yarns. The rest as you can note is a repeat vertically as well as horizontally. That means in the weft as well as the warp yarns. Now moving ahead if we look at the sequence of the draft considering a straight draft and looking at the different interlacements of the warp yarn we simply require two harnesses where the first two yarns move together and go to the first harness the third and the fourth yarn travel together and go to the second harness and continue the same for the fifth sixth seventh and eighth yarn with this kind of a lifting order you can with this create kind of a draft you can create a plain weave as well as a weft rib depending on how many times each harness is lifted so with the current order we can create a lifting order or a peg plan like so now if we want to create a simpler or a a uh, similar effect to that of a skip draft to reduce the friction between the yarns we need to increase the number of harnesses from two to four so here what i am doing is i am adding in i am creating the same design once again to show how the lifting order is going to be on four harnesses so this is four harnesses that we have taken here and we have created the same weft rib with a float length of two now here instead of going in the order of same interlacement order in the same harness we go in the form of a straight draft of one two three and four and repeat for the next four yarns which is the repeat of the weave now while we are doing this in the straight draft pattern for a weft rib we need to note that the first and the second yarn are traveling together so first and second harness are close to each other likewise the third and the fourth warp yarn are moving together with the same interlacement order in the third and the fourth harness so the harnesses can be clubbed and they can be raised together the first and the second harness and then the third and the fourth harness can be lifted together to avoid friction in the yarns and also to increase the productivity of the fabric so this is what a regular weft rib looks like moving on to the irregular weft rib as we understand uh, from warp rib examples also 
the float length varies in the weave which is why it is going to be called as a irregular weft trim so here in the previous example i have shown a float length of 2 consistently for every set of 2 yarns here what we will do is the first yarn gets marked as a plain weave the next yarn also repeat and repeat the same thing on the third yarn so you have a float length of 3 here and then for the last two yarns you have a float length of 2 so you are repeating the fourth yarn once to create a irregular float length of 3 and then 2 this can be repeated uh, as many number of times according to the width of the fabric and this is where we have the repeat of the weave for the drafting if you can notice i have marked five harnesses here so i will follow a pattern similar to the straight draft clubbing the harnesses together so my first three yarns go to the th first three harnesses the last two yarns go to the last two harnesses so when we are weaving this kind of a sequence the three harnesses can be held together and can be lifted at a go and the last two harnesses can be held together at a go to create the effect so this is how you do the lifting order or the peg plan of your irregular weft trip and mark the sequence of lifting the harnesses so here we have regular and irregular weft trip the strength of the fabric is similar to that of a plain weave if the float length does not increase too much the thread density can be increased as compared to plain weave because of the longer floats more yarns can get accommodated this if the float is longer can also increase the moisture absorbance of the fabric see you all once again thank you